Yeah. So I'm back. We're doing a march up to um, I'm not sure where <laughs> trade union house. So bear with me. Um, so Amanda can't march, so she's staying with her gear, and um, and I've got Barb here, who's holding the other end of the banner, and we've got people. Um, here we go. So, and of course the Victoria Police, which have um, been fairly good. So, come with us on the march. Beautiful day here in Melbourne. I'm, I've just got my t-shirt on. I didn't have to bring a jumper or anything. Gorgeous. <laughs> We're flanked by police officers. I'm not used to this many police officers. Like yesterday in Brisbane, right, the two guys from Indrapulli come up. Hi, how are you going? I'm such and such, I'm such and such, really friendly. We're yeah. not here to intimidate. Oh, there's more coppers up there. Yeah, no, they're everywhere. Right? And, um, you know the rules. I said, yeah, I know the rules. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was it. And then they parked down the street, put their lights on to slow the traffic down so they could read our signs. Oh, nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he, he purposely moved to a place where traffic would slow down once he put his flashes on. Oh. And then everybody slowed down and was watching our signs and waving at the people oh, we had. So good. Yeah. Is that this week? That was yesterday in Brisbane. Brisbane. Yep. Oh, no, no. So... Country, you? Almost. <laughs> the only one I couldn't get to was Adelaide. That's at 2 p.m. this afternoon. I couldn't get there. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do that one. I couldn't do that one. Thank you. Have you noticed that I don't use a speech? Yeah. I can't. If you give me a speech, I stuff it up. <laughs> so, I've always done that. I'm live on our Facebook at the moment. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> so good. I'm not even paid to say that. I was asking her a question on the video this morning, and then I realised afterwards that I was watching the replay. Exactly what they're doing to get us across this busy road, all safely. So here in Melbourne, you have to have marshals. <laughs> um, so bear with me while I sit here. At least Hey? Hey? Yeah, I know. So we've got another one that says Indu, but it's in Brisbane. The Brisbane crew have got it. So. <laughs> I think both can be true. I think you can be. I think, I think you can be. More, I think you can be. Oh, we're going up the street, guys. <laughs> We've actually got. We're going on the road. Alright. Hang on.
I should have put my head on. <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> Retail and fast food workers union are here as well, which is good. Have a look at the museum, guys. We'll give you a little tour of Melbourne while I'm here. And a tram. <laughs> where, where are you from? Um, I live just outside of Maribor in Queensland. Oh. So, um, yeah. You spoke well and it was a good talk. Thank you. Excellent. Support from Sedona. Hey? Support from Sedona. tram goes past we can unbunch as you can see we're all bunched up at the moment but we have to give way to the trams yep we need to put 
all LNP One Nation on the bottom of every voter card. Do not vote for them. Simple as that, get rid of them. It's all right, I'm looking at my live feed. The Corruption Corporation. The <laughs> Corruption Corporation. If they put the 255 million they put into this, into the services, and a, a decent raise the rate for people, yep. right? Then we, we, we can't have proper, prosperous. So much. Yeah. Hang on, I've got to swap arms here. I just don't want to drop my phone. Hang on. Oh, I don't trust my left hand whatsoever. All right, okay. We'll swap again in a minute. <laughs> the shoulder was killing me. Poverty wages. Poverty wages. Poverty wages. Poverty wages. Poverty wages! Poverty wages! Poverty wages on the cashless debit card! Slavery! <laughs> Want a Rolls Royce, anybody? Hey? Look, a Rolls Royce! An oldie. Stay not fight back when remote communities are under attack! What do we do? Stand up, fight back! 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 Fight back! Stand up, fight back! Stand up, fight back! Oh, this will this will work off the arm and croissant I had this morning. I've got to swap arms again. I've been so bored. This isn't too bad. We're going downhill. If we go uphill, I'm stuck. <laughs> Never be defeated. The workers denied it. Will never be defeated. <laughs> the things you see in a different city. <laughs> Can you say some of the names of the places we've got in Australia to a bunch of people from overseas must be? What a strange name for a place like now and now. But the Aboriginal names. Yeah, I know. So. Huh. Veronica says, what's with the cops? Sorry guys, I come from Brisbane. We don't have as many, we don't like, 
We had two guys at our protest yesterday. They're parked around the corner out the way. <laughs> Uh, it's different to Brisbane, that's for sure. And Harvey Bay, they just drive past, wave and carry on. <laughs> a friend of mine was in the police force, the Victorian police force, and she was, um, oh, what do you call High up anyway. She joined, she's, she's, a, she's gay, and she joined the police force, and she liked the uniform. I asked her one day, one day, one day, one day, one day, one day, she told me I nearly fell over. So somebody just sent me a message. I can't answer her at the moment because it's a text message. That's what that ding was. But somebody's asking, has the card been rolled out out of Springs yet? Well, it started on the 17th of March, um, which was yesterday. Then they'll try and coerce people to change from the basics card to the CDC. Don't do it. Stay on your basics card. Keep your rights. Hey, we're going downhill. This means we have to walk uphill back. Oh, he said it was 700 meters, not seven kilometers. <laughs> Batman Avenue. It's probably it's pronounced Batman. Bateman. Yeah, Batman. It's Batman. It's Batman. Batman. Oh. They wanted to originally call Melbourne Batman. You know, Batman. Batman. Do, 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 do. That's the thing I think of. <laughs> 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 What's his name? Um, Batman. Oh, can I put his <laughs> name? <laughs> Wait. Well, Look Batman a Batman 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't remember. Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. <laughs> no, that, that's Batman. I'm talking about Batman, the, whose name is. <laughs> we need a Batman with the mask. Yeah. Heroes don't need capes. <laughs> Not all heroes wear a cape. So what are we doing apart from standing here holding the road? <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Catherine. I'm, I'm live up there. Hello. 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 I've been on the Zoom from Melbourne. You know, oh, we right. The, okay. When we had the I'm just live on our Facebook. So, yeah, that's right. I just thought I'd let you know before you start talking in case it's a private conversation. So, now what are we doing? I'll talk to you after for sure. I always let people know they're live, that way they really know what they're saying, what they can't, you know what I mean? go to this end so I can get some footage. I'm just going to run around while everybody's stopped um, and get some side footage. Yes. Oh. Might as well. So. Do you want one of us to take it to oh, yeah. you? Hey. Do you want one would, of you, would you like to be yeah. in the, the shop? Uh, oh, yeah, if you don't mind. I'm just trying to get, I'm trying to give, just a second, I'll just give people a more of an idea how many people are here. Yeah, that'd be great. 
Um, well, tell me to stop it's it. It's live right now on, on Facebook, and the speaker's under there, so don't block that, okay? Mm -hmm. Cool. No worries. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. It's a very inconvenient tree. <laughs> there we go. We captured where we are now. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. That's just it. That's the main thing. It was yeah. us marching there. And, um, I thought I'd capture where we were. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll be purple by the time we get up. When we go back, because it's all uphill, I'll be the colour of your shirt. Well, I'll probably blend into my shirt. <laughs> safe arrangements to get to the other side right next to the SWC. All right, so we're going over there. Didn't come out. Oh, he wouldn't come out at all. He's a coward. Why would he, he come out? In, he was in Melbourne. I mean, it's then turn around and say, we should be grateful that we weren't shocked. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wouldn't it have been funny, though, if we had a walk out the other one with duck? Has he got a gun? So we're just waiting for the police and everybody to, so that we can move to the other side of the road. Traffic supports us. Never be defeated. The Rookies United will never be defeated.
to stop the cat. <laughs> Get a bit lost. But we all come at the same fight. It's all the, the same fight. Workers United can never be defeated. United can never be defeated. The workers united can never be defeated. Right, we're lining up here. Oh, I want to get a photo of this, so when we get there, I'll leave you with this and I'll come this time. Go, if we can... Well, here we are again. Well done, everybody, and uh, well done to our team of marshals. What a terrific effort to get us safely through the street in the middle of the day. And um, we thank the police for their cooperation with us. I'll go down there and film more, okay? okay. Now, the space we have is essentially the cycle lane and the footpath. Do you want to come down here? Follow and, me down here. Uh, I'm asking everyone to pay due attention to social distancing, of course. And that means, as many of you are doing, you should also uh, wear masks if possible. Um, in this final part of the final segment of this action today, we are in front of the Fair Work Commission. And the Fair Work Commission I'll only say this once because I said it back in the park. It is the site of many decisions made by commissioners and full benches and so on that are reinforcing the government's desire to drive down the industrial wage and make it overall closer to the poverty level. So we are here to learn more about what the union movement itself is working out about how to tackle this situation. And yesterday, we learned that the federal government, of course, has now given a green light to more wage theft. Yay! And in a couple of weeks, is the deadline day for submissions for the annual wage review. And we can bet that the employers will be asking for nothing, or maybe 0.5% increase in the minimum rate for wages, thus driving wages further behind price increases and closer to the poverty line. Our first speaker here is Geordie from Crossbow Voice, UWU, and welcome to Geordie, who is deeply experienced in the trials of wage theft and the struggles for a decent wage in the hospitality industry. So thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, so I'm Jordi, I'm from Costco Voice, I'm a barista, uh, but before I'd like to begin, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Um, as several speakers have already pointed out today, we can't be having these conversations about wage theft and exploitation and the welfare system without centering Indigenous voices, because it's Indigenous communities that are bearing the brunt of these horrific policies, you know, the basics card being the perfect example of this. So I wanted to talk to you guys uh, today about the link between a casualized workforce, a weak welfare system, and the exploitation of workers. When workers have no job security, and there's no safety net for us to pull back on, we're forced to accept jobs that undergo our basic rights, because our only other option is poverty. There's no better industry to examine how this dynamic plays out than hospitality. So almost 80% of the hospitality industry are casual workers. Um, so it should come as no surprise to all of you that uh, hospitality workers also represent the highest number of wage theft claims with their work, and that's especially migrant workers. So, uh, so we have a lot of hospitality workers in Hinkler and around the country that are on the cashless debit card because they sh just don't get enough hours um, to get off Social Security. Not you know, um, it so it's not, not a coincidence that, that low wages will make sure that companies like Indu and the banks will get a fair chop. Meanwhile, people are living in poverty and under control. Well, Halia, hello, long time no see. How are you going, girl? Send me a message, let me know how you're going, Mahalia. Uh, where, where a reason for termination must be provided with permanent work, employers would simply tell a casual worker that there are no shifts available at the moment. 
when a complaint is made. And it's incredibly hard to prove this link unless your employer was silly enough to put it in an email. I can attest to this practice because it's happened to me twice in the last 12 months. At both cafes, I was promised award wages in the interview, only to be sorely disappointed when I received my, my first paycheck. No pay slip, of course. When I queried my pay, I was gaslit and told I didn't understand the award. I was made out to be a troublemaker. I was even told that speaking to other workers about their pay is illegal. Disclaimer, it's not illegal, it's a workplace, right? Yeah. Um, both cafes suddenly didn't have any more shifts for me, yet refused to actually terminate my employment. I went into the pandemic in March last year, already unemployed, already having burnt through my savings, and I was already on the brink of mental collapse because one of my employees was threatening to sue me for defamation because I complained about wage theft. That's right, they would rather put money into a lawyer than actually pay their workers. And this is a fucking norm in hospitality, and it has to change. Sounds like my ex. And here's the thing, guys. I'm one of the lucky ones. I was at rock bottom and I had my parents to lean on. But how many people don't have access to that? What about people who can't, who can't get money from their parents or who are in abusive situations? What about people with kids? What about migrant workers on temporary visas who don't have any family here, who have a language barrier and don't have a shitty settling payment to fall back on? What about them? We can see what happens to them in the pandemic as well because they were left on the street. Our, our international students here like entirely fund our university sector, but the government is happy to turn a blind eye when they're exploited and told them to go home when they needed help the most. It's a disgrace. So, what can we do, guys? Join your union. Yes. I joined Hospital Voice and I was able to get advice about my rights at work. I received help in drafting an open letter to my employer on behalf of all staff outlining our rights. And of course, I was connected with other workers who were going through the same thing. Um, I even got to protest outside one of the cafes that fired me, and I got to yell at my boss with a megaphone, which was great. Karma. <laughs> but most importantly, joining my union has opened my eyes to the power of the collective and the power that we have to actually transform the society that we live in. Because it's through organizing our workplaces that we can stand together and we can't be singled out when we demand our basic rights. It's through organizing our industries that we can change norms and we can demand industry-wide change to our working conditions. And it's through organizing the working class as a whole that we can demand that basic rights are met of every single human being, that we can demand that our politicians act on climate change, we can demand that pigs like Christian Porter don't get to keep their cushy jobs when they make women unsafe in the workplace. As union members, and this is the power that we have when we act as a collective, when we think as a collective. So, if you're here today, no matter what your job is, if you're unemployed, if you're a barista like me, if you're a nurse, if you're a teacher, whatever, join your union and start to think collectively. Because it's only through acting collectively that we can start to transform the society that we live in. Thank you. Well, Jordy, how good was that, everybody? Aren't we all learning something new about all the bits and pieces of our wonderful movement that is still growing and still has lots of growing it must do into the future. We've been learning lots of things from different people, the No Catholic Welfare Debit Card movement, what pensioners are organising around, how do we bring all this together. That's what we have to work on between uh, now, and, uh, now and the next two or three, four or five years. We all have to think about that. And now we have our second speaker from the union movement. Okay, His name is Victor there. Moore and he's the Senior Vice Amazing. President of the Rail, Tram and Bus Union. I've got to say this about Victor, we've just been renewing acquaintances from the old days. And you know what, Victor is one of the people in the, in the movement who has switched on very early to what we have been trying to do in starting the process of bringing all the bits and pieces of our organisations into one. And a big thank you to Victor because he invited uh, myself, but invited the Living Incomes for Everyone campaign to talk with his executive about what we were trying to do. And here he is today backing up that invitation with his willingness to participate in the whole event and to speak to you now about the union perspective about the downward pressure on wages and the Thank destruction, you. the attempt to destruction of working conditions. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you very much.
First of all, I'd like to thank you all for being here today. It's a fantastic turnout uh, in the auction business has started something hopefully very, very big. There's a real history in relation to the fight against poverty and unemployment in Victoria. Uh, there's the Unemployed Workers Union, there's the Work for Today, there's the Right to Work Committees, there's the Prohibition Against Poverty and Unemployment, uh, and all that over the years has continued, and hopefully this is a part of that continual, uh, history continuing into the future. It's a very proud history, it's a very active history, and activity, as we all know, wins in the end. If you stay silent, you do nothing, you get nothing. If you're willing to stand up and fight, you'll get some of them in the end. And you just keep on fighting day in, day out. It's the only way to get rid of this, you know, ridiculous society that we have. In relation to the industrial relations side of it, well, I've been up here a few times, I can tell you. And unfortunately, the uh, industrial war, people sort of think on the outside when they don't have much to do with it, oh, it's fairly equal, things are evenly balanced. Well, I'm here to tell you, it's not. It's a clause, it has a sub-clause, it has a Roman numeral, it has a letter of the alphabet followed by another sub-clause that unfortunately impacts on working people's lives. And it becomes a lawyer's feast. Now, the commissioners up here see themselves in their role as overseeing the implications of the industrial re uh, relations laws in relation to how they view the impact of the law. Unfortunately, that law is unequal. The minute you walk in there, you're walking in on your back foot. Unless you have others behind you, unless you have the trade union movement behind you, you will always be in the back foot in this particular place. And unfortunately, it's getting worse, not better. And that's largely because the law itself is an ass. There's no clearer way to describe than that. If you can't have a law that protects people who are going to be retrenched, then what's the point of the law? If you can't have a law that looks after people who are being ripped off day in, day out, then what's the point of that law? We need new industrial relations laws, but we need laws that look after people and don't see them as the enemy. Now, we've also got a situation, unfortunately, we've seen in the past of mass retrenchments, and unfortunately it's going to continue to, to, uh, continue to grow, unfortunately, due to this COVID situation. Now, if you take industrial action in relation to trying to protect your job, you're at fault. The employer can come down, threaten to sue you, they can threaten to put you in jail, they can take you to any court they like, and the court will back them up nine times out of ten. And unfortunately in a place like this, the Fair Work Commission, it's a situation whereby they will protect that law. They will go right down the line, you can take it to the full bench, you can take it to the Supreme Court, you can take it to the Federal Court, you can even take it to the High Court. But all it is at the end of the day is it's a boss's court. And we only know that really all trade unions here today will know that the only way really to win a fight is to fight it out on the ground and to win it on the ground. That's where it really counts. <laughs> And finally, I just want to end up by saying that the trade union movement and the unemployed movement have always been together as one. The trade union movement recognises that unemployed workers are used as a buttress by the employer to threaten the existence of awards, to threaten the existence of working conditions. We see it time in and time out. I remember being on the uh, supporting the picket line down at the Dollar Sweeps dispute, which was one of those benchmark disputes back in the early 80s, which uh, Peter Costello uh, was involved in, who was a Liberal Party uh, federal treasurer of some ill note. Uh, and that was a picket line that was mainly had elderly women on it. They bought in a um, couple of scabs. Uh, they bought in also quite a few folks to try and punch their way, way through a picket line. Uh, and that became a benchmark of trying then to undermine working conditions. There was then the Mudge and Mary dispute up in the Northern Territory in relation to the um, to the meat work, and you remember from there it just snowballed and snowballed. There was then also the attacks on the, the old British Labor's Federation at the time, and slowly but surely all the conditions over the years have been attacked one by one. It's like watching a thousand cuts. And really the union movement, I know the previous speaker has said it before, in terms of collective, you've got to join the collective. At the moment we're sitting on about maybe 15% membership, union membership across Australia, that's a terrible condition to be in. If we want to negotiate, we have to negotiate through strength, and that means we need to build those numbers, regardless of the industry. 
It means that unions outside of those industries need to support those inside those industries to organise. That means we've got to get the numbers on the ground and we've got to get them active. So with that, you have our support. If we can do anything for you, we'll be there with you. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Victor, and also generally to the Rail, Tram and Bus Union for your solidarity and support over the years and, of course, right now. Well, we're reaching the end of this action, towards the end of this action, and uh, we've been talking a little bit about how we're learning from each other, about the importance of each other's struggles and how they can be connected. As we were going along, we were inspired, actually, by the chants that were pushed up by the RFFWU. A big part of our union movement, although not registered in the normal way. Thank you very much for doing that. I'm going to put an ask on you, if you're still here, brothers and sisters, if you could think of some a chart that will actually finish the whole event off, that would be brilliant. Thank you. Also here, just stitching things together a little bit more, we have Rahu, an organisation, an organisation that are, or, help, uh, supports and organises in a political way for people who are on the threat of losing a home, a roof over their head, and we know how many more tens of thousands of those that are experiencing that at the moment. And here we have a wonderful example in Victoria of an organisation that is doing something about that, not just as an act of charity, but as a political demand to make a better society than the one that we have. So thank you very much. And now I want to finish with asking you to do some imagining. Imagine in the next occasion we can stitch together our relationships a bit more powerfully with more people and more organisations. Let's imagine that next time we are learning more deeply about what Rahu does. There are other organisations as well that are friendly to us but not yet here. We can learn from them, about them, and they can learn from us to build a common movement. Imagine that happening in the next two or three or four months as we head to the budget. Imagine that happening as the year ticks over with other events, building this movement. So that in the end, imagine that instead of 150 odd people being in front of the Fair Work Commission, there's 5,000 people here. All acting as a working class, unifying group, seeking to win our demands, not just complain about the fact that we're not. Imagine next time we rally in Treasury Gardens, there's five to 10,000 of us and we're right in front of the Commonwealth officers, not just down the street 100 metres. And they are beginning to get frightened of us. That's what we must imagine. But in the end, we must turn that imagining into practical effort. As Joe Montero from Fairgo for Pensioners challenged you all to do, what practical effort will you do that will be better to make this movement more unified and more powerful. You have been wonderful being here. It is exceptional because we walked through the streets 150 strong. That is something special. So go away from this event, talk with each other, review it, work out how it can be better and let's all be here again. Have you got something for us, Rapwood? Yeah. Why we go? Thank you everyone. You have been safe in solidarity with each other. Go safely.
to your next scene. Thank you.